I'm Russ Askin. Uh, I run the Business of Law Group uh, with Wilson Allen. I've been doing business of law consulting for two decades, whether that's uh, mergers, acquisitions, succession planning, partner comp, all the way to helping you know, partners and attorneys enter their time. I've done it and, and everything in between. And, and it's that everything in between uh, that has sort of led myself into this discussion around cloud readiness uh, when it comes to firms' infrastructures and their solutions and systems that are out there. Over the past, I'd say mostly the last 10 years, I've worked with countless firms, you know, you know well over 50 firms on navigating or transitioning uh, some of their solutions, uh, whether that's a practice management solution, a CRM, uh, document management, and other solutions out there, typically as part of an operational review. And because of those engagements and that exercise, it, I've really gotten a solid insight as to where the industry stands and where the industry is thinking with respect to uh, to shifting or or moving some of those solutions to the cloud. And so that's really what we're going to be gathering and, and talking about here today. We're going to be looking back a little bit, talking about where the industry stands, talking a little bit about what uh, a cloud conversion means, uh, and then dive a little bit into what Wilson Allen believes is the path that firms should take as they develop their, their cloud strategy. Uh, and I'll start, I mean, look, I am your operational business of law consulting guy. I am not Mr. Technical Expert. Uh, and, and so if there's a lot of questions about like red, green light exercises about security, probably we'll have to bring a, another uh, individual in. However, um, you know, because of that operational background, I, I found myself many years ago asking a question some of you might be asking now, and then what the heck is the cloud? What does that actually mean? I know when we looked at the attendee list, this is a pretty diverse population, so we've got some pretty high experts when it comes to technology and folks who are probably just as confused as I was uh, many years ago. And so I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible. We're not gonna dive too much down to the IAAS or SAAS or PAAS, but we're gonna talk about that cloud really is taking the solutions and software and data that you have housed forever for many firms on premises, on servers, or on your own hardware or your computer as an example, and shifting the access to that to those solutions to the internet uh, or the movement of that data and, and, and software and solutions to the internet. And that's it's really as simple as the cloud uh, comes into play. Now it's very complicated how that movement takes place and how the vendors approach um, uh, their services. And, and that is certainly something that you need to review and consider as you go through it. But really that's what we're getting at. It's the shifting away from hardware and infrastructure and maintaining that infrastructure to, to, uh, uh, to access uh, by the internet or the web. So let's talk a little bit more about why we're seeing a lot of discussions and movement within the legal profession when it comes to shifting to the cloud. And I'll go over a lot of the, the survey data and history here in a second, but why are firms talking about and shifting to the cloud uh, so much? The first is, is an easy one. It's, it's flexibility. Um, and I think a lot of us felt that as we, as we went through the pandemic. You know, if you are accessing cloud-based solutions, you can really be anywhere, um, whether that's at home or, or you know, hidden away at a cabin or on vacation or whatever it may be. And obviously, when we look back at the pandemic, a lot of operations that for a long time required folks to be on site to process those operations became very difficult to manage and maintain because, again, we had a lot of law firms on that old on-premise infrastructure rather than being with cloud-based solutions. And so you found a lot of firms scrambling when it came to you know, meeting those operational needs because of the solutions that they had. So flexibility is, is a key. I'll add on another level of flexibility here as well is that most engagements with different providers of cloud solutions are, are done on a term basis. If you don't have all that hardware infrastructure and, and upkeep that's taking place uh, on site at a firm, the switching costs are, are a little bit less. Now, that's not to say there's not services and a lot of you know, usage on a system, but the switching costs of key systems uh, uh, become a little bit less so. And so you have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to vendor. Uh, as, as your time with, with cloud-based solutions move, move along. The second component of why firms are really shifting the cloud is security. 
we as a profession, and it's not just law firms, it's all professional services, we're not in the business to be the security experts to manage our, our data. Uh, we've had plenty of incidents over the last 10 years that we don't need to dive into of where, whether it's hacking or the loss of data or whatever it may be, law firms have been susceptible to, to attacks. And again, we don't want to be in the business of managing and being up to date on all the security needs out there. It's not the business that we're in. And so we want to offshore or, or, or send that effort to a vendor who is much more capable of doing so. I mean, we've got Microsoft, we've got Amazon Web Services, we've got Google, we've got a whole bunch of other you know, really, really advanced technology companies that are providing security expertise. It's better for us to shift um, that that duty and that 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 need to those vendors who are capable of doing it. scalability. Um, as I'm sure all of you have been through uh, over the last 10 years, if you've got major systems that need lots of upgrades or you have new technology that comes into play that you want to take advantage of, the ability to scale with an on-premise solution is, is difficult. And so moving to a cloud solution allows for easier upgrades, easier navigation, and change to new technology compared to what you've used in the past. And, and there are other ones, you know, items that we can list here, but these are really the kind of key ones that, that I hear. And the final one is really around resourcing and cost optimization. There is this mindset that if we ultimately end up switching to the cloud, the overall cost structure of our IT staff will uh, staff and, and, and uh, uh, department will be less. Um, that's hit or miss right now, and I think that remains to be seen. But uh, you know, there is an element, and certainly there is a a desire to see a consolidation of costs, a consolidation of of the resources that we maintain at law firms to to support our overall technical infrastructure. So, you know, on you know a global scale, these are typically the five things I hear the most. As I said before, there's there's other ones that are out there, but that's that's really what is driving a lot of these decisions. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about the pandemic, but the pandemic was a real spark for a lot of this activity. So what? how do folks shift and how do they address their infrastructure with respect to the cloud? Now you'll go online, you might find the six R's and the seven R's and the eight R's and the four R's, there's a lot of them out there, but I'm gonna to try to keep it relatively simple. When it comes to how do we move and how do we analyze our a solution that is currently on premise? And how do we move that to the cloud? There are different ways that you can do it. The first one is kind of a duh, no duh one. It's that you have an on-premise solution. It's vital to the firm. It may be on some older software that's not feasible to shift to, to the cloud. So you may just have to ultimately keep the on-premise solution. And that's what people would call retain. And that's, again, we're going to talk about this, but going through an assessment of all your various technical components, that's really kind of where we're going and, and, and identifying what we can do with each one of those components. Retire, again, you're probably not going to be able to shift it to the cloud, but it's not a solution that you want to keep. So you just go ahead and get the, rid of the solution and maybe redundant. Again, these are kind of simple ones that are out there. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom now which is replace, which is, hey, we're going to go out, we're going to buy a SaaS solution that you know provides us everything that we need. We're going to get rid of our on-premise solution and go kind of fully uh, cloud compliant. Um, and, and, and then you have the three in the middle. And this is where you get to some of those other uh, terms, the IAS or the PAS. And that's really where we're re-hosting a solution. So basically you're taking the infrastructure and moving that to the cloud. Um, a lot of uh, firms will call this kind of a lift and shift, and that's that's really where you're talking about shifting that solution from on-premise to a cloud-based provider. You have replatforming, which is taking a look and reviewing the database and kind of completely transforming that underlying database uh, so that you're moving that platform to the cloud. And then you have sort of a re-architecture where you're redoing the entire code uh, of a solution again, with a cloud-based uh, solution. So those are the, the typical ones that we see. In my experience, the ones you're gonna run into the most, uh, it's certainly within professional services and legal platform is either retain, obviously you gotta keep it, rehost where you're doing a lift and shift uh, from an on-premise solution to, to, to the cloud or, or replace, which is, you know, we're, we're gonna retire, our solution, but we're going to go ahead and buy a brand new uh, SaaS solution that's out there. 
So let's talk a little bit about the industry and where things have gone. It, it's going to take you back down memory lane for my life. Uh, you know, about 10 years ago, I was traveling all around the globe with LexisNexis, and I was meeting with a bunch of CIOs and leaders of firms talking about various topics that interest them, obviously, within, within the profession. And, and one of the topics that we brought up back in 2012 was what firm out there is interested in migrating their solutions to cloud-based uh, providers. At that time, I can remember, it wasn't just Miami, it was New York, it was London, it was several other places. There wasn't, there was, sorry, there was one person in those meetings, one person who was a bit of a pioneer who wanted to head towards the cloud as, as much as possible. Every other major law firm that I talked to was, nope, we're not doing it. It's not ready. We're not comfortable with it. We don't even want to think about it right now. We have too many other things going on. Some firms have just done recent big investments for on-premise solutions, and it just, it didn't, it wasn't feasible for them to, to even consider moving to cloud-based solutions. Fast forward to last year. 2021, and this is thanks to ILTA. This is out of their, their ILTA technology survey, um, uh, the executive summary. Almost every single solution that is out there, knowledge management, marketing, uh, so your CRMs and, and other technology, uh, accounting finance, your practice management solutions, every single one of these solutions, the idea of transitioning those solutions to a cloud provider and having a cloud-first mentality that mentality has increased with every single operation that's out there. And if you see over there on the left, you know, cloud with every single upgrade, right? We went from a very, very cloud reverse to again, kind of a, a you know, more cloud friendly uh, position. And again, this was really, really sparked by, by the pandemic. And so if we break this down and I recognize by the way, that some of these uh, graphs are tough to see. So I'll, I'll translate it here. Um, if we break this down by number of lawyers and operation and seeing where those operations stand by size of firm, again, we can see significant growth uh, in the cloud market when it comes to each one of those operations. Now, a couple of things that are important within this dynamic, with this, within this graph that you see here, a lot of these operations have trended with vendors. So as an example, we'll talk about here, I'm going to talk about practice management systems because it's kind of near and dear to my heart, but it kind of goes with all the various operations that are out there. If you have vendors that specialize in your segment of lawyers who have done a significant switch in the way that they position their products to, to be more cloud uh, uh, rather than on-premise, you're going to see that shift take place as well in, in the segment that they're targeting. So prime example here, um, a lot of the smaller law firms that are out there uh, kind of got in line with a lot of the cloud providers that came out in 2008. So that's the Clios, the, the Cosmo Lexes of the world, and so on and so forth. And so you've got a shift that takes place if you look at accounting and finance in this greater than 50 or even I would add in less than 50 to 50 to 149. And that's really because a lot of the providers that target that segment are cloud first. We're starting to see that shift take place in the larger market. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Same thing if we have the conversations with marketing. Marketing down here, you've got less of a cloud uh, focus on the smaller firms. Now, a lot of that is because those firms necessarily don't necessarily have the, the robust solutions that the larger law firms have. But again, vendors on the large law side, whether it's one place or interaction or, or, or foundation or other systems that are out there are making those shifts. And so we have an interesting scenario taking place where the vendors are making the adjustments, the law firms are now becoming more friendly to the cloud. And obviously that's gonna create a wave of movement that takes place from on-premise to, to cloud. Now, again, as I mentioned before, sorry, just moving my uh, the pictures around here. If we look at a, a little bit diving down of you know, where is your, uh, is your system located? In this case, I'm gonna focus on time and billing versus, uh, versus some of the other solutions we talked about here. And this is from 2022, again, the ILTA survey, the prevailing answer is again, 
that most firms have on-premise solutions for time and billing. But there's a couple of important facts to pull from here. It's going down. We've gone from 80, you know, 80 plus percent down to the 70 percent uh, of solutions. And again, this is across the entire uh, profession, at least that was surveyed. And we have the cloud providers uh, going up. Again, a significant sea change that has taken place from where we were back in 2012 to now. The, the second graph is even more telling. This is where it's saying, if you are looking to replace your solution, are you looking on-prem or are you looking cloud? It was certainly much more on-prem in 2020. Again, right when the pandemic hit, now it's almost exclusively cloud. So what does that mean? It makes sense why vendors are shifting their focus to their cloud solutions. It makes sense that what happened in the pandemic and seeing the, the feasibility of migrating your solutions would lead firms to make these, make these decisions. So again, we've got a significant, significant sea change, but it presents a, a, an interesting dynamic. And, and sorry, this is just a little bit talking about some of the segments that are out there. You can see that almost all the providers that are out there are either now cloud only, maybe either solutions. And then of course, for, for our larger market where it's almost exclusively Adderant and Elite, they have either solutions available whether that's a cloud option or on-premise. But we are seeing, again, that wave, even in the larger segment of where the focus truly is on cloud solutions. So what does that lead, where does that lead us? So again, just because I went from accounting and billing and talk about that, I'm gonna focus a little bit more on that. Because we had a, like thousands of firms, especially if you bring in the small firms that were out there over the last decade who have made a significant system change, practice management, uh, I could also add on CRM intake, document management, other core systems out there. We've had a, you know, thousands of firms that have made a move over the last decade, almost exclusively all of, all of, to an on-premise solution. It's only been recent that we're starting to see this switch to the cloud. So we have an interesting, again, scenario where we've got all these firms that invested in on-premises and now going, uh-oh, maybe I want to be in the cloud. And so what's what it's created is a lot of interest of what do I do with my, my solutions that I just implemented on-premise? How do I move that to the cloud? What does that mean? How should I approach it? And that's what we're going to dive in for the rest. And again, all the momentum, vendors, everything is going towards um, um, the cloud. What we need to avoid is the lemming effect. This is so prevalent in, in the legal profession, especially, is that if down the street, Firm X purchases uh, Elite 3E, we got to purchase Elite 3E. If, uh, or we, you know, you know uh, Firm down the street purchases Adirant, we got to purchase Adirant. If Firm down the street raises their associate salaries, we got to do that. If, if, if they raise their rates 10%, we got to raise it to 10%. Everything that we find within this profession has a bit of the lemming effect out there. And, and, and with respect to this process of shifting to the cloud, really what the firm down the street does may not be right for you. And so it's important that we take a step back. And so a couple of things to consider, you can't just snap your fingers and move all of your systems up to the cloud. Some systems are going to be much more difficult to shift, much more difficult to replace. Uh, and, and it's impossible, again, to just have a quick shift of all of your key systems up to the cloud. It takes time and understanding. You need to know your goals. You need to know your deliverables. We'll talk about that here in a second. So we, we need to have a process to identify how we're going to move that. Our belief is that any conversion, whether that's a technology transition to a new system, even if it was on-premise, a marketing, finance, document management, intake, HR, all of those provide an opportunity to improve operations and to understand what you're doing. Same thing here. As you move something from on-premise to the cloud, you need to understand what you're moving. You need to understand the deliverables. You need to understand the interdependencies that are out there so that shift uh, or that purchase of a new system or that, you know, re-platforming or re-architecture meets your firm's needs. And by doing simple upfront work analysis, it will <laughs> take away a lot of the pain 
mistakes and costs that we see with firms that sort of dive into this. The other key belief that's out there is that this needs to be a collaborative approach. What, what I've seen that I'm a little nervous about is IT team saying, we're going to go to the cloud, everybody get in line, this is our strategy, don't bring anything else to the table. That's not all that helpful, especially when you have accounting, marketing, HR, partners, and so, so on and so forth that rely on data and operations that are currently on premise. You need to have a collaborative approach so that you understand the impact of any shift that may take place with any system that's out there. And so, again, most firms dive right in, they go talk to their vendor of choice, they discuss a cloud approach, they, they, they go ahead and move. And again, they may not have addressed all the various things that need to be considered before they make that move. And so what we are advocating is for you to step back, to do a cloud readiness assessment, where you're looking at your processes, you're understanding your processes and how they may change in a new environment. You understand your resourcing, your infrastructure and interdependencies within those infrastructure pieces so that you're not just shifting something where all of a sudden you have a third party software that's not gonna integrate to that new cloud-based provider. That you understand the deliverables that are out there and, and, and what gaps you have in your technical infrastructure and in your operations. And it's not, you know, some folks are like, well, how hard can it be? Well, let's use an example. If you have a firm that's been on an on-premise solution for 20 years and is all of a sudden saying, okay, I want to move that to a true SaaS solution and, and no problem, it's going to just be an easy shift over to that. Well, what if that firm had a you know hundreds of user-defined fields or attributes that they've created to shape their entity maintenance, to shape outside council guidelines or things like that in, in their intake process that they need to capture and maintain and historically look back at for their firm? Maybe some of those UDFs or components are involved in their comp process or involved you know, in, in the way that partners do their day in, day out activity. What if they had a bunch of third-party software, maybe some very old software that's that's you know on you know you know that isn't compatible with some of the new solutions that are out there that is vital to the firm. That needs to be understood, whether it's third parties for time entry or, or downstream marketing or whatever it may be, that needs to be understood before a shift takes place. You know, you could have customized solutions, you could have standalone databases that interface, you could have legal obligations to your clients for security protocols. It, all of this is indicative of, of a firm. And, and trust me, this isn't outrageous. This is something I run into with a ton of different firms. This has to be analyzed before you can ever just go, oh, great, we're going to go to the cloud, we're going to go to a multi-tenant solution, all this. I'm sure it's going to move over just fine. That's not the case. You need to sit back and truly understand what you're trying to do and what needs to be moved versus what doesn't need to be moved. So 10 top things, I know I'm a little bit running out of time here that you need to be reviewing before you dive into this. Obviously, as I've identified before, you've got to dive into your current infrastructure and you've got to dive into where you see gaps between those, those assets within that infrastructure. You, again, you could have some very old on-premise solutions that isn't compatible. And we need to know that before we go into this. Technical strategy. You need to know why you're doing this. Is it a cost benefit analysis? Are you trying to save money? Are you trying to get rid of the security component within your IT team? Are you trying to, to uh, change your resource pool or add more flexibility? Or are you trying to be opportunistic and just making shifts when things pop up? All that has to be designed and understood what are you actually trying to get out of it? Because you might find that just staying on premises is, is better depending on the scenario that's out there. There are other elements that are at play here. Some firms have master data management plans. They have their MDDs and the flow of data goes through all their various systems. That absolutely has to be considered as you go through the assessment um, to determine where you should be going from a cloud-based uh, solution. Then we have everything on the operation and personnel side, whether that's challenges and in, in ways that we want to improve the way that we are operating. If you want to add some, some flow or workflows within your billing practices or your intake practices, excuse me, or your reporting practices, those are challenges and desired improvements that you can try to address as you make these shifts. It's, it's essential to know 
how operations is using current technology and where that needs to be as they shift to a, a, a new provider. Information flow. Uh, and, and then kind of the last component on personnel and res resourcing needs, it takes time to do this. You need to schedule and stagger these changes. And so again, this isn't an overnight thing. We need to have a true plan as to priority systems and when they should move, interdependent systems and how they should move with those priority systems and to have a solid strategy and, and tactic plan to, to support these efforts. So where should you start? I kind of alluded to it earlier. First and foremost, even if you're not you know, engaging with us or someone else to kind of drive a lot of these decisions and discussion points, get a solid inventory of your entire infrastructure, get all of the interdependencies and all the changes that take place, all the ins and outs of these systems and, and what system relies on others. If there's customized solutions, reports, et cetera, et cetera, that all has to be documented and, and, and it, it needs to be fully understood before you ever speak to a vendor understand why you're making the decision that you're not just doing the sort of lemming effect that you're trying to figure out you're trying to have some sort of key benefit with making this transition to the cloud and then before again you ever speak to a vendor make sure you understand your operational deliveries how it's going to impact uh, accounting hr marketing uh, so on and so forth and making sure that you have that solid layout of what your operations and your technical uh, ecosphere looks like what to expect as you go through this, you're going to get confused when you go into vendor meetings. You know, different vendors have different approaches. And again, if you're not a specialist in this and you don't have a full understanding about where you're at, it's going to be pretty confusing as to where you're going to be in, uh, in the future state on the, on the back end once things are, are changed. As I've seen, at least with other firms, Chances are you're going to forget about some dependency as you go through this process. Ideally, it's a minor dependency. And if you do this appropriately, you're going to pinpoint and figure out all the key priorities that you need to keep in mind. But I have seen, at least for a lot of firms, that there's something that is just missed in this process and intends to get messed up on, on, on the back end. Payment terms. This is a new world for a lot of systems. As I mentioned before, there are a lot of systems that have only recently shifted to a cloud first mentality. That means they too are trying to figure out the pricing terms and what makes sense. You're trying to figure it out, consultants are trying to figure it out, and the vendors are trying to figure it out. And so it, it's important to know that you may not have the absolute perfect deal for the initial term out there. And, and it's, you know, obviously the more informed you are, the better off you're going to be. But we have seen a, a couple scenarios where folks are kind of overpaying just to go to the cloud. So I know I'm up at 12 o'clock here. What do you need to do now? Selfishly, get with the right third party consultants to guide you through this process unless you have the right people on staff great if you do make sure that they're doing all those things that i just mentioned and they have a solid roadmap going through this process as i you know illustrated before first steps are about understanding your architecture understanding your operation understanding all the various flows that take place at the data and then finally this is a major move your executive committee, if you're a law firm or other professional service firm, needs to understand how this operates. And so please, please, please make this a collaborative approach. Make this useful for your entire firm. I think I hit 12 o'clock perfectly. So I'm going to open it up for, for questions if anything came through on Q&A. Monica? Yes, thanks, Russ. Uh, a lot of information there. So for those that do have to drop before we finish up here, um, thank you for attending. And if you have further questions, please, again, just reach out to webinars at wilsonallen.com. But we do have a uh, couple of questions here, if you can hang on. Uh, we have, how do you accommodate data? I, I, I see that, yeah, I, yeah. I see it in there, Monica. I'll go ahead okay. and address some of them. So do we need a cloud readiness assessment every time you are moving an enterprise application to a, a SaaS provider with different vendors email? I, what I believe is you need an assessment for your entire firm and that should inform components of your technical ecosphere. So yes, should that assessment impact all of those various decisions? hundred percent. So yes, you do need sort of a subset of that overarching firm assessment through each uh, through each deliverable and each system that you go through. Um, so yes, I do believe that's the case. 
Um, data integration, that's dependent on providers, uh, whether that's a SaaS provider or an IAS provider or a PAS provider. So that's going to be really kind of dependent uh, on, on those various systems. However, if you're talking about master data management and, and uh, allowing that, you need to, again, make sure those vendors can provide that flow of data through your various operations. That goes back to the whole topic uh, of, of why you need to understand the flow of data and your, your various components within that technology. I don't know if I answered that the way they hope, but, um, but that's, that's, that's essentially what I would want to do. Again, that, that flow and architecture and data flow, if you're finding a vendor to uh, provide a cloud-based solution, it needs to be incorporated within that data flow. 